Hello and welcome to Live Interactive English. My name is Brandon. I'm Kim. And we're going to be talking about why we are underwater. We are underwater today in a first here. We are actually broadcasting from under the sea. Yes, it's pretty amazing actually. I came down here for one reason and one reason alone. What's that? To find mermaids. They're not real. That's bad news. Okay, I will make you feel better for, for doing this journey. I can show you seahorses. Okay, is that where it's like half horse, half fish? No. There's a horse underwater, you see it. Horse swimming? Is that it? No. Okay, so we're going to talk about seahorses, and I think one is coming right now. Do you see it? That's a shark! <laughs> Known for their curly tail and the horse-like head that gives them their name, seahorses are unique among ocean animals. Let's take a deep dive into the world of these special creatures. The seahorse is a small fish that is found in both warm and cool ocean waters. Their size ranges from as small as a peanut to as large as a tennis shoe. Seahorses come in many colors, and some even have the ability to change color to match the environments where they make their homes. All right, we're back on land, Whew. and we're ready to get into our article, A Deep Dive into Seahorses. This is part one. Do you get it? It's deep dive because they live oh, under the ocean. It's huh? like a deep dive where you like study something intensely yeah. under the water. Right. Specifically. What? Yes, that's exactly okay. what it means. All right, let's see how it begins. It says, known for their curly tail and the horse-like head that gives them their name, seahorses are unique among ocean animals. Let's take a deep dive into the world of these special creatures. Ah, you know what I was doing earlier? I was, I was doing this in the intro. That uh -huh. was supposed to be the curly tail. Oh. Is it? I, uh, well. I just didn't. Recognize it. Anyhow. Anyway. <laughs> it continues on. The seahorse is a small fish that is found in both warm and cool ocean waters. Their size ranges from as small as a peanut to as large as a tennis shoe. Now, you know, I'm not sure what I thought seahorses were. I don't really imagine them as fish. Like, they don't look like a tuna yeah. or a salmon or... I don't imagine them as fish, but I also don't imagine them like crabs or lobsters, like no, that kind of... they are different from those things, right? right? They're so strange looking that you don't really think of them as fish, but no. also not as other things that live in the ocean. Hmm. Maybe right? The, maybe the classification is wrong. The scientists are wrong on this one. Mm, I think We're so. right. Not a fish. Now, they can be as small <laughs> as a peanut to as large as a tennis shoe. That's actually pretty large. That's a sizable little yeah, creature. Yeah, I didn't know they could get that I big. I always thought they were pretty small. I think because when you see them in people's houses or in zoo, uh, aquariums, not zoos, they're usually pretty small. Maybe, maybe this big? Yeah, or yeah. if you see them on TV, maybe you just don't really... Yeah, you don't really get the idea of size. Interesting. Well, it continues. Seahorses come in many colors, and some even have the ability to change color to match the environments where they make their homes. Oh, it's kind of like a, a lizard, right? Like a some chameleon. lizards do that. Yeah, yeah lizard. chameleons um, change their color. I do know some other, like octopuses, uh, they can do that as well. Oh, yeah, that's they can. cool. Yeah, all right, well, that's cool. So, okay, so they use the word match, and that's a verb. Now, match means look the same, basically. So if something matches, you might say, oh, oh, like our shirts kind of match a little bit. So the color is a little bit the same. You can say, oh, you two are matching today. Um, but the example sentence is, these curtains match the couch perfectly. And that would just mean that if you go into this home, you see the curtains and the couch look the same color or design or something of that nature. Yeah, a match is usually a positive thing. Mm. If something matches, it's good. So if this is matching and it looks good, then it's positive. Or you could say you and your husband, your wife are a good match. So you're good for each other. 
and maybe your relationship is really happy. So matching, I think, is usually a, a good positive thing. Yeah. And for seahorses, that's definitely a positive thing because they want to match their environment so they don't get eaten. Yeah. You know? Actually, I saw a picture of a seahorse once. I didn't know it was a seahorse, but it actually had things coming, growing off of it that makes it look like leaves. And so it looks like it's part of the leaves down in the plants and things down in, under the water. It's very interesting how they match their environment just naturally from... I think a lot of animals really do that to try to get away from predators because seahorses are not what I think of when I think of like dangerous <laughs> animals. They're not like, you know, gonna bite you or anything mm -mm. like that. They're pretty calm as far as I know. So they need some protection in their environment. Otherwise the bigger fish are just gonna eat them right up. So yeah. hmm. nothing they can do about that. Too bad. All right, so we're gonna go to our break and when we come back even more about seahorses. <laughs> Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。今天的课文标题是 A Deep Dive into Seahorses。我们知道 dive 有跳水、潜水的意思嘛？那么 deep dive 在这边呢，是指深入探讨。之后可以接 into something 来表达深入探讨某事物。好，那我们就是要跟着这两天的课文一起潜入海中，好好的了解海马这种生物喽。海马呢，以卷曲的尾巴，还有像马一样的头而闻名。那他们在海洋动物当中独树一格，在温暖和凉爽的海域当中都可以见到他们的踪影。而这些小型鱼类的尺寸可以小到跟花生一样小，然后大到跟网球鞋一样大。Brandon 老师这时候用到 sizable， 就是在 size 后面加上 able， 构成这个形容词，描述说是相当大的。好，那课文接着写到说，海马有许多颜色，有些甚至能够变。色来配合居住环境。那么单字 match match 当动词就可以表达和什么相配，和什么相称。那么当名词的话，它可以表达相配、适合的人事物。我们就可以用 A and B are a good match 来表达 A 和 B 很搭 ，A 和 B 很相配。那老师们在聊到变色的时候呢，有提到 lizard 是蜥蜴 ，octopus 是章鱼，还有提到 predator， 我们拼一下 p r e d a t o r， 它表示掠食者。那 Kim 老师则聊到说，他并不会想要把海马想成是鱼类，毕竟它长得就不像鱼啊，它跟那些尾鱼啊、鲑鱼的长相不太一样嘛。那老师说到这个 tuna 就是尾鱼，还有 salmon 是鲑鱼。那这边两个重点，我们进入文法时间。好，来看第一个重点是分词构句的用法。用对的连接词 and 去连接两个主词相同的子句时，你就可以省略 and 还有其中一句的主词，然后把那一句的动词改分词。如果动词是主动，你就用现在分词 v i n g， 被动就用过去分词 p p。举例来说 ，She was upset。And she locked herself in her room. 现在我们省略 and， 还有前半句的主词 she。那你就要把那一句 she 省略掉那一句呢？它的动词 was 改成现在分词 being， 变成 being upset。She locked herself in her room。这时候 being upset 就是分词构句哦。不过 being 常常被省略，可以再简化，就变成。Upset, 逗号 She locked herself in her room. 她很不开心，把自己锁在房间里。所以下次同学们如果看到形容词逗号、主词加动词这样的句型，需要记得形容词是来自分词构句 being 加上形容词省略而来的。第二重点是 come in 点点点可以表达有什么什么，可提供像某个款式啊、尺寸、形状等等。举例来说 ，the laptop comes in three different colors。这款笔记型电脑有三种不同颜色可供选择。那我们接回到课文中。Seahorses can swim in all directions and move vertically in the water by pumping air into or letting air out of a balloon-like organ inside their bodies. Even with this organ, seahorses are the slowest swimmers among fish. Their only way to push themselves forward is by using a tiny fin on their back. Often, seahorses hold on to floating plants with their tails for a faster trip. The seahorse is one of many sea creatures that mate for life. Every morning, male and female seahorses dance together to deepen their romantic connection. And amazingly, it's the male, not the female, that carries and gives birth to seahorse babies.
All right, let's find out more about seahorses. Brendan, take it away. All right, yeah, so earlier we learned that seahorses match their environment because they're not really strong and they can't do anything to fight back. Yeah, well, so they have to hide more. instead. Yeah, so it says seahorses can swim in all directions and move vertically in the water by pumping air into or letting air out of a balloon-like organ inside their bodies. Ah, that's probably how they get away. They can, oh. they can go any direction in the water at all at their own will. So if they see a predator, bigger fish coming to try and eat them, the fish can only go forward, but the seahorse can go just any direction. Ah, so they can go vertically yeah. as well as horizontally. Yeah, uh -huh. so it can get away any which way and the fish won't know which way they're going. So it's probably really, really good at playing dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be right about that. Yeah. Well, how do they do it? They pump air in and out of some organ inside their body. That's, that's crazy. That's very interesting. To think about. So mm. if you pump something, you are using pressure to force something from one place to another. So the most common example everyone knows is to pump your gas. So you go to the gas station and you pull on the handle. The gas will come out of the ground and into your car. Here's another example for you. Henry got out of his car and started pumping air into the tires. Mm. So I'm sure we've all had a flat tire on our bikes. You need to get that thing and... Yeah, I that's know what pumping that's about. air into your tires as well. Well, there's also the phrase or the thing that people do is like pump fist, I have fist pump, pump iron yeah, when pump you're iron. lifting. But weights. it's it's kind of one of those things. It's kind of like a joke. Yes. You're 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 not really pumping anything, but it's just a yes, yes, yes. I did a really good job. And so you pump your fist. Yes. Well, um, now we also talked about organ, and that's a noun. Organs are the things inside our bodies to help our bodies function. For example, uh, uh, the heart. Uh, I pointed my head, uh, I meant over here. No. The heart. <laughs> the heart pumps blood and that's one of our organs. The brain is another oh. organ. I wasn't using my brain just then. <laughs> but the lungs help us to breathe and the stomach, that's another organ. So the heart, stomach, brain, lungs, all of these things in inside our body to help us live and survive and function are organs. So here's an example sentence. A doctor typically checks your internal organs by pressing on your stomach. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Uncomfortable. Hmm. Well, it continues here. Even with this organ, seahorses are the slowest swimmers among fish. Their only way to push themselves forward is by using a tiny fin on their back. Often, seahorses hold on to floating plants with their tails for a faster trip. That is so cute. That's really smart. <laughs> Just like catching the plant bus, you know? Mm. Well, so I, cute. So I, I saw a picture that went viral recently of a seahorse, and it was actually holding on to a mask. Oh, no. A medical mask. And so I think there's too much garbage in the ocean, yeah. and people are throwing these masks away so much. It just caught on, but it probably was really helping it along the water I mean, that seahorse got to the grocery store in record time <laughs> with that very thing. Very fast so. seahorse. But that's interesting. They, they just have that small fin on their back, and that's the only way for them to go forward. So they must be extremely slow. Yeah. I mean, that, I've seen the fin in pictures before. It's just this tiny little thing on their back. I think most of the time when you see seahorses, they're just kind of floating there. They let the water kind of carry them back and forth. So yeah, yeah not too much uh, chance for them to go forward of their own power. Yeah, and forward is a direction. That's an adverb. So forward is just what's in front of you, in front of you. So if I walk forward, I'm going that way. And if I turn over here and I walk forward, I'm going that way. So whatever's in front of you is forward. The example sentence is, Ruth stepped forward to let someone off the elevator. That's very nice of Ruth. Yeah, it's very polite. Ruth sounds like a great person. Indeed. Mm. So, like I mentioned earlier, the seahorses, when I've seen them, they always seem to be floating. So to float is to be in the middle of water or sometimes on the top of water, and you're just kind of on the top or in the middle but not sinking and you're not getting out. You're just kind of in the middle there, yeah. kind of letting the water move you around. 
Our example, the paper boat floated down the river. Oh, so. you know, like when you learn to swim, a lot of in swimming instructors will uh, tell you to, okay, just learn to float. Learn I can't to float. Keep your body up. Well, you could if you were in space. Oh. You can also float in space. But I'm not in space. Well, then you'll never float. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it says the seahorse is one of many sea creatures that mate for life. Every morning, male and female seahorses dance together to deepen their romantic connection. Ah, uh, huh. really? That, that's amazing. Yeah. They do a little dance. Huh. Get up and just do the cha-cha with your partner All every right. morning. That's actually, so we could say they may be the slowest fish in the ocean, but they're the most romantic. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and it continues on. And amazingly, it's the male, not the female, that carries and gives birth to seahorse babies. So that means uh, normally uh, for people and for lots of animals, I'd say almost every animal in the world, uh, yeah, almost, almost every. the female, the woman, gives birth to babies, has babies. Whereas for seahorses, it's the male. The, the only boy. thing I can think of that's similar is penguins also take care of the eggs before they hatch. Mm. But they're not giving birth to the little yeah, baby penguins. They're just caring for the eggs. So this is very interesting. Huh. Huh? Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, we use the word deepen about their uh, romantic relationship. And deepen is a verb, and it just means uh, make deeper. Very simple. <laughs> right, so can you deepen your voice? I, uh, you know what? Go. Let's try it. Let's see here. Uh, 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 oh, uh, my voice is very deep now. There you go. Good example, <laughs> huh? Well, an example sentence is, teaching English in Japan deepened Vanessa's love for education. Oh, oh, so she really wanted to be a teacher before, but since teaching English in Japan, she probably feels like she loves it even more now on that's a different great. level. Maybe she decided that's what she wants to do for her career. For the rest of her life. All right, so that's it for us today. Join us next time and have fun under the sea, and we will see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>海马的身体里面有一个像气球一样的器官透过把空气抽入或抽出这个器官它们就可以游向四面八方并且在水中垂直的移动那即便如此海马却是鱼类当中游泳速度最慢的它们向前推进的唯一方法就是用它们背上的
let's take a deep dive into the world of these special creatures. The seahorse is a small fish that is found in both warm and cool ocean waters. Their size ranges from as small as a peanut to as large as a tennis shoe. Seahorses come in many colors, and some even have the ability to change color to match the environments where they make their homes. Seahorses can swim in all directions and move vertically in the water by pumping air into or letting air out of a balloon-like organ inside their bodies. Even with this organ, seahorses are the slowest swimmers among fish. Their only way to push themselves forward is by using a tiny fin on their back. Often, seahorses hold on to floating plants with their tails for a faster trip. The seahorse is one of many sea creatures that mate for life. Every morning, male and female seahorses dance together to deepen their romantic connection. And, amazingly, it's the male, not the female, that carries and gives birth to seahorse babies. My name is Jamie. Hey guys, I'm Ian. And today we're playing a game called Word Drop, where we each have three words or phrases on these cards that we have not seen yet, and we're going to be working them into a casual conversation. So, shall we begin? We shall. Get ready to lose. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, there is such a huge workout workout culture these days. You know, like everyone's always at the gym. They're always like maintaining their bodies and like their arms and their muscles and their legs and stuff and a lot of people really like to pump iron oh okay yeah i would say like pumping iron is like the best way to like build your muscles right and i would say that uh for me i'm not that strong so i tend to do more cardio stuff uh, just to try and build up my endurance and the only thing though is that when doing cardio, especially like on a treadmill, I feel like I'm never moving forward. You know, I feel like it's just standing in place. I love reading. It's like one of my favorite pastimes. Um, I just ordered about five or six books off of Amazon. And uh, one thing that I really love about reading is that it opens up your imagination so you can kind of travel to different worlds and places and things. And it really deepens your understanding of the world. Yeah, I also like reading too. I think uh, reading is probably one of the best ways to learn about new things. And one book I was reading recently was about a doctor uh, who harvests organs from Whoa. people. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. Dark. Yeah. Okay. I hope that these organs are, uh, have gone to people that really needed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and the funny thing is that about different body parts, I guess we never think about it unless you learn it in biology, but like the human head. What was the one that the line in Tom Cruise in that movie? The, the little kid talks about the human head and how much it weighs. But you just wonder like what parts of your body may float in water. Yeah, I'm actually not really sure which ones would. But I think uh, with organs, something I learned that I didn't know before was that people's organs don't always transfer that easily or that well. It has to be, it has to, they have to match the organs to each other. So it can't just be, you know, this random person with this random person. They have to ha be like suitable and they have to match each other in order to be a pair. Yeah. See you next time.